Hello, everyone. We will uh, start the session in the next couple of minutes.
Hello everyone, we are trying to fix some technical issues on our end. The education will definitely start in a minute or two. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the today's session. Uh, today's session is on how to <clears throat> write a scientific article by the founding director of Foundations for People's Centric Health System, FPHS, Mr. Dr. Chandran Laharia. Dr. Laharia has received his MBBS MD from Indian institutions, and he is India's leading medical doctor, public health expert, health policy specialist, epidemiologist, and renowned COVID-19 expert on prevention, <coughs> vaccination, and clinical case management. During the pandemic, Dr. Laeria has consulted COVID-19 patients and has provided advice to over hundreds of people. He has also advocated for the vaccination for all via different platforms such as social media, newspapers, TV channels, etc. He has appeared on media platforms such as BBC, NDTV, CNN, News 18, and many others. Dr. Chandrakant has also delivered lecture to hundreds of <laughs> students across the globe, including public institutions in India. And not to forget that he has extensively worked on child health and preventive medicine. Dr. Laharia is one of the core authors of the book, Tell We Win, India's Fight Against the COVID-19 Pandemic. And today he'll be talking about how to successfully articulate a text matter for publishing in a journal or any other mass reading platform. The session is in continuation of the previous expert talk we had last weekend by Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta from JNU, titled as Meet the Editor. If you haven't watched the video, do watch it after the session for having a better understanding of writing for the journals and different platforms. The session will help in building an understanding of the process and structure which can be used to produce a peer-reviewed publication which results in submitted and published manuscript. Thank you. We look forward to the conversation and we'll take all the questions which are there in the chat box and on our YouTube channel in the end. This meeting will be live on the YouTube FPHS channel, so don't forget to share it among your peers who might not be able to join us on the Zoom meeting today. Over to you, Dr. Daniel. Thank you very much, Anshika, and uh, good evening, everyone. It's indeed a pleasure to talk to you and see all of you in this uh, screen that you are interested and want to learn more about how to write a scientific paper. In next 45 minutes and so, I'll share some of my experience. So I'm not going to give you a textbook answers, but I'm going to share the, uh, with you my experience that what it means to write a good quality paper and get published. And as Anshika already shared that this is a follow-up conversation of what uh, Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta in the previous session discussed. So first of all, let me start with uh, one of the common question I get that I want to write an article. How should I do it? I think this is the one of the weakest question. Like if you want to write something, the first thing required is an idea, which you are clear and then that idea which you want to communicate to the rest of the people. So the starting point for anyone cannot be that I want to write without having idea what you want to write. So my first to write a paper, the first thing is that you need to have something to write, something to tell to the rest of the world. Now, Paper cannot be written, you think that you want to write something and then it is written. There is a long journey from the idea to publication. So, for example, if you want to write a paper, 
then on which on which topic you would write it depends upon what you already know so the writing process often people ask and i say is follow a acro acronym raw it start with the read analyze and then write so the first step of writing is reading and i would say that that is more important than writing writing comes in the last so remember this raw read analyze and write and that's the process you many of you who have done dissertation or thesis follow that your dissertation or thesis comes after a certain period of time it could be like in case of dissertation uh, one year or two year but thesis usually three years so what you do just think of writing process of thesis what you do in the initial part of uh, thesis writing or dissertation writing you draft a protocol and a lot of time goes into thinking the protocol development then sometime not sometime a lot of time then again go to either primary data collection and literature review so that's a reading part or primary data collection part then comes the analysis of that work and then you write and if you recall if some of you might be doing uh, pg thesis but the other might have completed the writing part usually of the two and a half years of thesis writing majority of time goes into primary data collection or literature review then analysis part takes some time and writing is very shortest duration two months or three months or four months or maybe six months in a thesis but if i break this part a writing part if you want to write something usually the reading i repeat this you remember this acronym please reading analyzing writing so if there are 12 months in a year and if you have to write complete something in one year then i would say reading takes 5 months writing takes 4 months analyzing takes 4 months and writing 3 months 5 4 3 that's another number so whatever time you require for writing a paper like if it's a one day and within that one day 12 hours the 5 hours for reading then 4 hours for analyzing and 3 hours for writing so what people often forget they when they ask me that how you write so quickly what they do not see the background writing and background analysis which has been done behind this so if someone want to move that i want to write without doing that background work of reading and analyzing it is not going to happen and that is the problem people do not or people fail to publish because they simply jump to the writing without investing enough time on reading and analyzing so that's the first message i want to you to remember that if in the future ever you think of writing think in the time manner time bound approach that have i done like i want to write on a certain topics first of all it will be little easier to write on something on which you have read a lot it will be easier to write on something which you have analyzed a lot but if you want to go for something which is you have not read and analyzed in the past then you have to complete that process first before you can go on the writing so raw make that principle of raw read if you want to write something in the future plan your time that you would do a reading for a most of the time for a lot of time then you would do analyzing and then you write i want to ask each of you just think and reflect for a few seconds that why phd's are minimum 3 year why can't a phd be offered in 6 month why require minimum 3 months 3 years and can go up to 5 years or 7 years and in across the world that is the approach like there are other some some other courses like masters of public health can be done in 2 years or 1 year but nowhere in the world phd is offered less than 3 years have you ever thought about that why that that happens why that is a standard approach why don't you give a phd like 1 year phd course so 
just pause for 30 seconds and get your answer. You don't have to answer here. But there is a rationale for having certain process, certain duration of courses, like professional courses are done usually in four years or five years or even longer. There must be logic and reason. Otherwise, people would say, okay, I want to do in one year. So think of that answer from your perspective for 30 seconds. And I pause for 30 seconds when you are thinking about it. Keep your answer to yourself, but key that PhD or any course, anything requires a certain period of time to develop that kind of skill. One of the common, one of the answer to this is in, some of you might have heard about Malcolm Gladwell. He has written a book in which he had talked about 10,000 hours. He talks that uh, to learn any skill, you need to invest around 10,000 hours in that activity. There is a book, I will not tell you the name, you can search the name Malcolm Gladwell is the author and 10,000 hours is a famous concept he gave. Now, it's a different story. Uh, many people argue that that concept is not that valid, but you, the point is to learn a skill, you need, yes, outlier uh, Ankit uh, say that. I wanted others also to learn about this thing. So the key point is, the reminder is to learn a skill, you need to invest a certain amount of time in learning that skill. And if you translate the PhD courses, which are usually three years and a certain amount of time you spend uh, on PhD courses and your personal time, you would reach that you reach something like five, uh, five 6,000 to 10,000 hours during that period. And usually people have to spend 10,000 hours. And in a year, if there are 2,000, in a year around 250 days you work, every day around eight hours of working, that makes 2000 hours in a year. The assumption is that it can be done in three years if people invest more time. So in three years, 6000 hours in during the course period and remaining 4000 hours during their learning outside the course period. But if you don't spend time outside the course period, then you would take at least uh, another two years, which is a 2000 hours per year, Five years, 2,000 hours per year, 10,000 of hours you invest. Now, it is a different story. It could be one of the, it could be uh, not 10,000, 8,000, but summary point is that you need to invest certain amount of time to develop a skill. And second point I want to make is writing is a skill. Unless you develop that skill, unless you start working or investing time, you cannot reach that level of writing which will make it publishable. With these two points, reading, analyzing, and writing, and certain amount of time is spent, it does not mean that you have to wait for three years before you write something. So what one can do? One need to build upon what you already know. So, so third step is that if you want to write, the easiest part would be that you write on something which you already know, about which you have read a lot, about which you have thought a lot. So your thesis topic or identify an area in which you know a lot and you can start writing on that part and that would be easier. But the alternative to that is that if you don't, you have not read a lot, you can form a team, identify the people who have read a lot. So 10,000 hours an individual can spend but if there are five people who spend 2,000 hours each or someone 1,000 hours, essentially, so the amount of effort needed is fixed for achieving an outcome. Then that outcome can be achieved either by individual by investing that many hours or a group of individual with less number of hours but cumulative hours on that. So next time, if you want to write something, think of the topic which you know or get a help of the people who have that kind of experience and expertise. So these, this, these are the broader thoughts and reflection on writing. You can do all of this, but then it is not published. 
often people say we have written our article it is not published now publishing is a different approach one it depends upon like you can write best of the article but if you send to the wrong journal the journal which does not publish that kind of article then it will not be published so you have to select a right journal right place to publish if you write for newspaper and publish, send to a medical journal it will not be published so we need to select selection of a journal is the key to for this purpose but also i tell you story from my personal experience so i was in medical college doing master my doctor of medicine md degree in 2004 to 7 and around that time and some of people might be from that medical college it was not allowed that post graduate student would write and publish but i published during that time from that medical college one of my first article on avian flu i tell you the date uh, avian flu was first reported from india on 18th of uh, february in nandavar district of maharashtra and when the first cases were reported i started writing piece that evening itself and within two days exactly two days i wrote the first draft of, about a disease which was completely new for india and submitted to a journal by 20th of february i submitted to a journal indian pediatrics within 7 days because it was a new topic within 7 days journal completed the review process otherwise it takes long time if it's not a topical or new topic and they reverted to me with comments some suggestions for revision that's a standard approach that evening i think i don't remember exact timing the evening i received the comments by email and from that evening i started working and the in that entire night i revised the piece uh, very late night i revised the piece and submitted to the journal so by the time journal editor came back to the office for work my submission was back to the journal they reviewed it of course external uh, review process was followed and it was accepted it was published in the uh, the most next subsequent issue of um, april 20, 2006 so my first article was written very quickly and sh- uh, on the new topic and i was very quick in revision of the piece what mistake people say that they start late like you have to as a public health person you need need to understand what is topical issue so if if you write about uh, a topic which is emerging now 3 months later so essentially you cannot take that much time to write about something which uh, which is very topical so you should be very quick that's part one second part is that people do not respond to reviewers comment and it takes a lot of time in reviewers responding to reviewers comment that it delay the entire process by the time the topicality is lost this is exactly an approach which i have followed being very quick in writing and uh, then being very quick in the revision of those articles and this experience i have shared from year 2006 but we did exactly the same in 2022 last year when monkeypox outbreak emerged in uh, european setting i along with my other colleagues started thought that this is the topic on which we should write the our team wrote actually the piece funky pox article in effort equivalent to 24 48 hours within two days of equivalent of effort by three people on 7th june we had submitted the article to the same journal about which i shared this story so two days of writing the journal reviewed within a few days and within 17 days of submission the article was published on 24th of june india had not reported monkeypox case till 23rd july so we were well ahead of this thing and our article was published well before that and it was finally online initially online first and then uh, in the print issue in august 2022 what are the learnings learning is that uh, you in a public health had to be really quick if you cannot do alone do with other people but do it quickly your content should be like you should be quick in your revision and keep reading about that topic 
Now, what is the commonality in monkeypox and avian flu? For these diseases, you do not need 10,000 hours of experience. For these diseases, you need to understand the broader principle of writing. So both of these diseases were new, avian flu in 2006 and monkeypox in new in the sense, new to academic community in, a, uh, in scientific publishing, though the disease, both diseases were known earlier. But we all of us were starting from the same level of knowledge and understanding. The COVID, a completely new disease, whether you are 70 year old or 22 year old, you have the same level of knowledge about COVID. So starting point is the same. And if you invest time, the, the, the people who would invest time around that time, when a certain disease is new, they would be ahead of others. They would be able to publish. So that's the fourth message I have for you, that if you want to publish something, write on a topic which is new, which is not published earlier, and develop in-depth understanding. And that's how you can publish. So publishing about uh, maternal mortality is possible, but it is a so well documented. Writing a knowledge attitude practice study is so uh, common, uh, so challenging to publish because nobody wants to publish those kind of study. So my few messages are to start with, and I want to repeat those messages that writing is the end product of a something a deeper knowledge which you have within you. And that deeper knowledge and understanding comes from reading, analyzing that content and then writing comes there. I said all of those things, but you should not be discouraged. You can still write and publish. How to still write and publish? That uh, after this conversation, this uh, webinar, please spend some time thinking that which are the areas where you have some background knowledge and understanding. And first of all, start writing about those in those topics, those areas. But if you have re read something, it's not enough to publish. If you have read, then what you what we want to convey to the people or rest of the world comes from anal analysis of that what you're reading. Unless you analyze you would not have a message to tell. If something which is already written and you have read, then what new you have to convey to the rest of the people. So new will emerge when you analyze that part. And this new is what people want to read. Now, usually in scientific uh, medical journals, you write for 2000 words to 3000 words. Now, one should not forget, like if you write 2000 words, it's, which means a person who is reading it need to read 2000 words, which would mean like half an hour, 45 minutes of that person's work. And unless you have something new, why that person should waste his or her time in reading that um, 2000 words or 3000 words? The person would be interested in reading your 2000 or 3000 words if you have something new to tell them. And uh, editors would be interested in publishing that because editor is take, uh, in, uh, going to use a few pages of that journal, which have a direct or indirect cost. So if you are saying something which is already written or which is already known, why editor should waste time and place and paper on printing that article? And then why reader should waste time reading something which is already known? So the success of writing article is that you write something which is new, now, people say that they cannot write, like they, it requires a lot of words. I think if you have to use a lot of words in saying something, then there is some fundamental problem. So one should uh, focus upon minimizing the fluff or reducing the fluff, like anything which is already known, only write those things which are new. And I'll come about how to structure it. So writing new is approach. Usually journals say 2000 to 3000 words. So most of the journal publish article in six pages, which is around 3000 words, a few tables. So in year 2012, I wrote an article which was 10,000 words. 
the journal allowed 3000 words and i have published extensively so i know that uh, 10000 is too many of the words for article so but i was not able to find anything which can be deleted from that article so i still submitted the article to indian journal of medical research which is one of the highest high impact factor journal and uh, so article was reviewed by them most of the reviewer gave a good comments but one review, one recommend was that uh, please reduce the article to 3000 words so it's not necessary my point here is not necessary that we should listen to every word said by reviewer so i responded to other comments or reviewers but uh, to the reviewer who said that to reduce to 3000 words i responded in writing i said that uh, i had a few points to convey and i have written only those points so in this article manuscript i have used as many words as needed not more and not less and i resubmitted to them with the same 10000 word or length article with the request that if you have any suggestion that what should be deleted please let me know of course the 10000 word article was published in 21 pages of indian journal of medical research one of the longest piece i have written in ijmr so it's not about wording but we should minimize wording my review articles i have published like a two page review article is also review article so it's not the length of the article which makes it great or uh, publishable it's the content of that article and that's what the another message so read analyze write on the topic which you know now people start writing from the they say oh like many of the times uh, when i interact with the student they say we want to write and publish and their focus is solely on publishing they say that we want to publish article because of certain requirement i think publishing is a good intention but goal cannot be publishing for me and i'm not sounding like uh, hello like for me the the real reason for writing is learning so the best thing which happens when you start writing you develop a good understanding of the topic you become a uh, expert in that topic and publishing is a by product even if it's not published but if you've done hard work on writing something that means you know that topic and for me that is a more important thing rather than publishing of course it, if it is published and published in good journal nothing better than that so if you publish then you are expert and published author but even if article is not published you are still expert in that topic so my suggestion to each one of you who is listening to this conversation that focus upon developing learning the publishing will come in due course it may take some time but it will happen but irrespective of whether you are published or not you will develop expert level knowledge of that topic the other point is that so uh, which journal i should select how to structure article and since these, these are the many topics so i would try to be precise for example most of the time there are different type of articles and you can go through journals website review article research article there are structured thing but uh, the broader principle is that in any article which will ensure that you your article will be accepted is that keep the introduction very short like people write introduction or background article in three pages i think that's a complete waste of time in introduction you talk about what you already know what people already know so don't waste time in writing introduction introduction should not be more than one paragraph at the max like if you are cannot fit in one paragraph maximum two paragraph but not more than two paragraph come to the to the point why you want to do this study so introduction should always be no matter original article review article not more than 300 words one maximum two paragraph introduction is that why you are doing this work so why waste pages on that there is nothing new which you know like introduction is before you started doing that research doing work. so introduction short introduction write materials and methods as detailed as possible 
there is no word count, but everything which like the entire idea of materials and methods is that if someone who is independent of this work, he, he or she undertake the work, they should be able to replicate. So materials methods, fairly decent space, uh, difficult to quantify, but uh, write as much detail as possible. Then comes the results. In the results also people write a lot. This is published, uh, uh, not more than one and a half page, like three to four paragraph, something which is there on the tables and figures should not be repeated in the text. And essentially, see what information you can transfer to tables, boxes, figures, graphs. That should go in that format. And the writing text should be minimal and only summary of those findings. So that's the results. But the most important part in any article, original article, review article is a discussion part. The discussion part, it can be like I my articles have a discussion longest section, most important section. Discussion should be at least like um, it could be if 3000 word article, I write discussion around 1200 to 1500 words, majority of section because that's where the analysis part come. That's where you write things which you have interpreted, analyzed, contextualized. In public health articles, discussion should always have a policy solutions and what should be done, uh, what should be done at different level and the research gaps, etc. So discussion is the most important part. And conclusion should be uh, one paragraph. What are the key actionable points? The abstract should be written in the end, but it should be a good summary. Now, one of the things to remember is Many a times, editors, reviewers are going to read only abstract of your article. They are not going to read the full article. So if you're, you can have a very good article, but if your abstract is not good summary, so it might not even go through the peer review process. So always write a good abstract. Spend as much time as needed. Do not rush. Abstract is written in the end. It should be structured. It should be heaven. Always write whether general is asking for a key message or not. Always write what are the key message. Like if someone asks you, okay, you have written this 3000 word article. What are the key message learning from that article? You should be ready. That should be on your fingertips. If you know that uh, key messages, those key messages could also be written as conclusion. And those key messages should also appear in conclusion of abstract. One key message as a conclusion of expert. Uh, abstract. So this is the structure of the article. And final part of this conversation before I go to Q&A and other reflections is that many people ask, okay, we want to write an opinion piece for newspapers. Now, one of the things to remember is that opinion piece for newspaper is not the same as, opinion, uh, as a new article for a medical journal. Medical journal are very jargonized, scientific information, references. Newspapers are for general public. Even if you are subject expert, you need to convey and talk something which is uh, uh, simplified. So first of all, remember the audience that whom you are writing. And this best can be done if you are writing for be it a medical journal or newspaper. Before writing for that article, newspaper or medical journal, read that journal for at least a few issues. What kind of article, what can they publish, what language they follow. If you're writing for newspaper, you definitely have to read the newspaper opinion page to get a sense of it. Like you, it's kind of osmosis. When you read something without realizing that you are absorbing that information and developing your mindset in that format. That's why like they say that uh, what you read makes you a person, like the, that kind of person. If you read a, a, a poorly published newspaper, a poor quality of debate, then like it doesn't help. That's why like people read high quality publications like uh, International Newspaper, New Yorker or Economics. Uh, 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 these are the news, like uh, they have a high quality of standards. So you, if you want to improve your writing, you should read the good quality work. When I say read, doesn't mean read anything. So the final part is that when you want to write opinion piece, 
opinion pieces are very smaller usually 1000 words 900 words whenever you are making opinion piece drafting opinion piece break this into three parts first is that what is the problem what is the challenge around 300 words on our around that then second part is that uh, what has been done to tackle that challenge and third part is that what should be done so problem statement one third what is already being done another one third and what you suggest unless you have something to suggest it's not opinion piece then why you write so that that's an approach having said that what i discuss is largely akin to like if you this gives you a learner's license sort of in a writing so you like a learner's license if you go to a transport department can we got if you learn some of those traffic signals or give a computer test you get a learner's license but that learner's license does not mean you can go and drive on the road you would definitely meet a crash or accident so from learner license to a permanent license there is a journey the journey is that you once you receive your learner license under guidance of someone you start practicing and then you practice for a fairly decent time you appear in exam and then you are given permanent license so this knowledge theoretical aspect which i have discussed and my experience discuss my experience is only with my experience is my experience from my experience you can get a guidance but you cannot uh, cannot become expert in that area to become expert you have to put this what i shared with you into practice so you need to start like a, we cannot learn a flying aeroplane by somebody teaching us aeroplane like you have to practice that you have to learn the different steps and you do have to do it yourself so these are the principles which i have outlined that how to write and what one should attempt to do to write scientific papers or opinion pieces which will be published but you will become expert when you start working in this direction so after this conversation i would say like uh, today onward start thinking that what are the topics which you already are well, well read and maybe you want to write, start writing on that to those topics but re read and analyze but you also want to analyze or write on the topics which you really currently not expert but you want to become expert so it could be two stream one or what you already know you can write on those topics alongside start reading about other topics on which you want to write and maybe maybe 3 year 5 year 7 year depending upon how much effort you make in those initial years you will ingrain and develop a approach to this thing that for every new topic you don't have to read and write that much you will quickly pick something that this is what is new but reading analyzing writing and putting this into a practice that's what will take you in the direction of uh, good publishing i think i'll stop here and ask uh, if fellows have any question or anshika want to moderate Anshika? Yes. Um, participant, can you please write the question either in the chat box or raise your hand? We'll go one by one. And those who are on YouTube can definitely write the questions in the chat box. Sruti has a question. Yes, Sruti, go ahead. Um, good evening, sir. Uh, so my question was uh, if we have a data which is uh, around uh, 5 years old or something and uh, we uh, want to publish it uh, now so uh, like uh, that could be one of the reasons for uh, the rejection of the article uh, which uh, i am facing actually apart from self plagiarism because a part of it has already been published and uh ref in the reference the published uh, article uh, i mean reference has been given so how how do we uh, submit resubmit it to a journal and get it published i think this is a very important question what happens uh, you conduct research uh, research work 
and then you get busy in different things. And by the time you start thinking of publishing a paper based upon that data, it is a little late. So that's a common challenge with many people. Now, having a five-year-old data does not automatically mean that the article would be rejected. But the people who have done this research need to examine and ask themselves a question. And you just ask yourself this question, what is new in this data, which is not already known? Now, if there was, and so to ask two questions, what is new, which was new when it was five years ago? I'm sure you would have done research. So five years ago, there must have been something new. Had things, have things changed since then in the last five years? And what things have changed? So these are the two questions which you need to ask. And if you are answered, you can structure your write-up accordingly. So that's part one. If not, nothing nothing new has come and you think your data is uh, relatively like same, same in the sense that uh, no other studies have come out and uh, not much has changed in that direction, then you can still write the paper. But even if some new similar paper have come out, some other, other studies have come out, things have changed, then you have to change your strategy. You document that, that this was a five-year-old data, but what has changed since then and what is relevant, only that much data need to be used. But you can compensate for a delay in the release of data by analyzing the changes since then. So making the discussion section very strong and focusing upon those, uh, those developments and new parts, what is new. Now, what would be the, I still think that even five year, seven year old uh, data is publishable. Uh, but something which could have been like a five year ago original article might be might have to be redone to a, uh, as a as a short communication or also if you you have to do a more additional research and strengthen the uh, discussion part and you can publish so but pub, what will be published is that what is new and you have to rewrite change your approach identify present present uh, approach a presentation that's on the second part third part is that if you have already published uh, a sub component of that data probably uh, very few general would be interested that you publish uh, the, the, that's data once again so only you the data which has not been published and fourth and most important thing is that you have to select like a very high impact factor general would not publish old data but there would be general who would publish uh, uh, that kind of uh, article. So select a right journal. You have to uh, lower down your expectations. And then if you select the right journal, you can publish. So these are the three, four things you have to keep in mind. Hope I answered your question or you have a follow-up? Uh? Mm, yes, sir. Okay, so thank you. On, thank you. Another question from YouTube. Um, Dr. Sudhir asked, <clears throat> can you please elaborate on predatory journals and advice on how to identify them? So the predatory journals are uh, the one which are like uh, just search for the authors and want to publish. They are no, uh, no scientific standing. But I would tell you, like, I know in some of the academic institutions, the requirement that you need to have a articles published anywhere. But as a researcher and someone who put a lot of effort in research, one should not aim for less than a index, less than a high, in general, less than a journal, which is indexed at least in PubMed or Scopus or both. So we should set a bar high. And the reason is simple. Okay, sometimes like if you are like, 60 year old, you want to publish anywhere, that's a different story. I'm sorry for saying that, but if you are a young researcher, it's a disservice to yourself if you want to publish anywhere. Because the publishing is not for publishing. Publishing is for developing your expertise. Entire idea of writing, at least the way I see, is that you learn about that topic. If you want to write something without learning, uh, then uh, th then this, it, it has no point, publish wherever. But if you want to publish for learning, developing understanding expertise and publish in high quality journal. The point is, is writing or publishing is an addiction, good addiction. 
uh, if you publish in good journals, but if you publish in a poor quality journal, then somebody or you might think that, okay, publishing is so easy. And then you want to publish in the same journal, same journal. Like I would have prefer 10 good articles or five good articles published rather than 50 poor quality articles which nobody reads. 50 articles were somewhere. So aim for a good quality journal. And if it's not good quality, not index, at least one internationally recognized platform, then do not publish. Or improve the quality of that article that it can go there. Unless there is some compulsion, absolute essential like, uh, okay, you want to publish two articles and they are recognized by UGC and all of these things. Now, if your criteria is to get academic promotion, then publish in those journals. But if your criteria is writing something worthwhile, you want to challenge yourself, you want to have an academic standing. So this is not a red race that anyone, everyone should publish. It is a red, it's a race to publish a good quality article. It's a race to show, uh, show that you can publish in good journal. Now, <clears throat> this brings me to another point that if you write a one poor article, you will keep publishing poor quality article. But if you write one good quality article, you will strive to write a good quality article. So while weight and your desire to, your urgency to publish poor quality is like you feel, okay, I want to urgently publish, so poor quality will fulfill that desire, but it is a disservice to you. So I would say, even if you have to wait, publish in good quality journal. Now, initial struggle for early career researcher is that they, uh, they think like they find it really difficult because they don't have exposure. Then you identify a person who should can guide you. Now, this is another uh, point I want to highlight. So you, first of all, if you want to find a mentor or guide, it's not like that person is going to do the work. Finding a mentor and guide is excited by amount of effort you would do and the good quality of work you would do. They would simply guide effort you have to do. So if you want to find a good mentor, then you have to do that many fold of hard work. If you go to anyone like uh, with the hard work, without hard work, if you don't want to do hard work, if you select a good mentor and then you, uh, you want to like, uh, you, do, you are not putting your effort. It's a wastage of your uh, time and mentor's time. I want to tell, and since this talk, this talk is about my writing experience, so I'll tell you, once I, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I met someone very well-written, respected, um, and well-published. And when I first met uh, this person, he's also very senior now. I don't, do not want to share the name. So initial 45 minutes, uh, he highlighted the importance of mentor or guide uh, in scientific or academic career. That time I did not give that much weightage, but today from my own experience say that uh, uh, having a mentor who would guide you is very useful. But having mentor is also important, uh, mean that you have to show, live up to the expectation of that mentor. The mentor does not do anything you have to do more work to meet that mentor's expectation. So when I started with working with this senior person, I, uh, I'm really thankful for his guidance and uh, suggestions to me in early career of my life. So when I started uh, working with him, he was a faculty at certain place. So he would tell me uh, in the morning uh, that Chandrakant, um, let's discuss this topic in detail and come to my department at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm saying eight o'clock. His department would open at nine o'clock and he would say, come to my department at eight o'clock. I would reach his department 7.45 while he had asked for, never ever I was after him and he would reach 7.55 even though he said eight. There are people to open. He was senior person. There were people to open the department, but they would turn at nine o'clock. But he would come at 7.55 with the key of the department. We would sit in uh, his room 
we'll discuss the articles and different topics. And by the time other stuff dripping in, flowing in in the department, we would have finished the conversation. And that's how for many months I learned and he guided me. So when you say, okay, I, I'm a fellow in a certain program, we should be guided. You have to show that the, you have put the effort. It does not mean it's a, uh, it will come without effort. Like the time of guide or mentor is providing guide. Guide does not mean right. Guide is about direction. And that this direction will be on certain, if you, uh, if you have some content, so you have to put effort and content and then it can be guided. And the role is that something, uh, this is Hindi Kabir's uh, poem, but I would say that uh, in English, uh, that uh, this Guru Kumar Shishi Kumbh, which essentially means that uh, teacher is like uh, the person who gives a shape, but the jo mitti hai or other things are already there. So student had to come, when a student or when a person who wish to learn is ready, the teacher will appear and teacher will give a direction. Sachin Tendulkar or Saurabh Gangli or Virat Kohli were not trained. They had put their effort, but they were given guidance. Ramakant Achrekar was gave only guidance. The skills and expertise and effort were put by those people. So that's what it is. Like we make a mistake that somebody would can change if you... Uh, just because like somebody should guide or rather worst crime in my opinion is that uh, authorship people uh, give a ghost authorship and authorship uh, without putting effort. I think this is a disservice to those people because if, then you do not understand the importance of scientific writing, the effort which required in writing. So only if you have put effort, seek authorship and that is the real learning because authorship, publishing, I want to repeat it's so a common misconception is about uh, uh, publishing authorship or writing is about learning. And the day many of the young people, I'm growing old, like I joined MBBS in 1998. So, uh, so uh, with the time you will learn those skills, but greatest disservice to younger generation, like this is like if you are early career, if you do would not put effort in early career, you would not learn. And the, you have to pay the price in the time ahead. So put as much of effort as possible and you will succeed. Another important point I want to share that most of the time people make mistake procrastination, delaying everything. Our writing an article takes uh, three days equivalent of effort, five days of equivalent of effort. Now this effort, most of the people spread in one year, six months. I think that's not the way, like if you, the maximum motivation to write something is in the beginning when you pick the idea. So if you cannot write something in seven days, don't take up. Because if you, it's a three day equivalent of effort and you want to do in seven days, take, put other things aside, write a piece, publish a good article and then uh, do other things. But if you want to do over a period of time, every day, one hour, two hour, it doesn't work. The, the thing, it requires thinking. It requires good level of understanding of that topic. And that cannot be fragmented piece. Like, uh, the, uh, in the ancient time, Maharshi or Rishi Muni, you to go to Himalaya Parvat, they would have a longer sitting. They could have said like, we will sit for 30 minutes every day and then they are no, no different from uh, commoners. So to uh, mature an idea to get a good understanding to get a new perspective you need to read because and then analyze because unless, if you don't read you are in your world and you might think that uh, your idea is new idea while if you read you will realize that this is not nothing new this is widely known and then if you know entire reading on that topic or at least a wide range of reading on that topic then you can analyze that what in your opinion in you. So reading, writing, reading, analyzing, writing, doing this in a shorter period of time, doing like a devotee and doing like with the mentor who can guide you and putting some extra hard work will make you expert in that topic. Writing is a byproduct or publishing is a byproduct.
Dr. Lairi, I would like to know if you have the, some more time bandwidth so we can take questions. If not, then we'll ask the participants to email it to us. No, we can ask, uh, uh, we can uh, have a few more questions. Yeah, uh, Swati has her hand raised. Swati, can you unmute and speak, please? Huh. <clears throat> so, first of all, thank you for providing foundation of writing research paper. And so my question is that how many different studies should be taken for writing discussion, mainly in the comparison part to the current study? So it depends upon, uh, uh, it depends upon the object of study. Uh, if, the, the, if the topic is, for example, uh, respectful maternity care, and this topic you would not find many studies, but if the topic is uh, neonatal deaths, or causes of neonatal, you will find little more. So it, there is no standard answer. Though a certain journal say that you should uh, not have more than a X by Z number of references. But my point is that uh, align your research work based upon uh, uh, objective of your work, select 10 to 15. If you have multiple studies, 10 to 15 best studies to cite, maybe five, if there are plenty of studies, those should go as a supplementary material. But in the main writing, you are not going to use all those studies unless you do systematic review. If you are doing systematic review, then take as many as required. But if you are writing an original article, select the most relevant study and uh, cite uh, put other studies in the supplementary material, main, not the main content of the article. Okay, uh, we have a couple of more questions from YouTube viewers. Uh, one was supposedly we have submitted an article to a journal for review. How long does it typically take for an article to be accepted and rejected? Clubbing it with the earlier question asked by Medha, which was on how to deal with the rejection of articles. So uh, it depends. It varies from uh, one journal to another journal. So it's important you know what is the uh, usually decision making time. Uh, I think uh, journals in India are doing disservice. So like again, you have to select the journal. Like if some journal takes a lot of time. Don't submit to that journal. I do not. I submit to only those journal which makes a quick decision. Uh, because the problem is that uh, what uh, earlier was raised that if a journal takes two years in decision and by then your article, if they reject, it becomes two year old, it's become non-publishable. So it's a crime on the parts of editor. I'm saying it's a criminal offense on the part of editor to delay the decision. The decision of publishing, uh, whether it's accepted or rejected should be very quick. Usually international journals take six weeks, but uh, it can take longer because it is also dependent upon external peer reviewer, how much time they take. But there are many good Indian journals which like make decision very quickly. Second part is that you can publish, submit to a P journals which are good, which uh, takes time, but if they provide good quality peer review, so your article, quality of your article is improved. So that is another criteria. But I, for early career researchers, I would say do not like uh, have a mentor or somebody senior who understand writing process take his guidance and then also be very pragmatic in selecting a general. Select a, mid, uh, a general which is not super uh, high rejection rate. So, and also very quick decision-making. So if it's published, it's helpful. And then if you can revise, you can submit to other general. But uh, one need to, as I said, like you need to read general and newspaper to understand what kind of articles are published. And if you understand that, then you can select, okay, my article, this is a standard of my article, my, your self-assessment of that article. And based upon self-assessment, submit the article to the general, which is most likely to accept. And of course, there is no harm in writing an email to general editors that this is pending for long, please uh, take a decision. Either way it is. Uh, how to deal with the rejected article? I think it's a normal process. Sir. In the life, uh, we need to understand that rejection can happen because you submitted to a wrong journal, which does not publish that kind of article. Rejection can happen poor quality. If it's a poor quality, uh, consider to a journal which can accept that kind of uh, article, uh, but always published in an index or a general in index in a good reputed international indexing system, not any, uh, any predatory general, the discussion which we had earlier. 
Oh uh, yeah, uh, we'll take another last question from the chat meeting we had. Um, so Alok is asking, can you please explain about the writing commentary on any new published report? So uh, the commentary writing is always like uh, it's like new. Okay, commentary in a medical journal and scientific uh, and uh, opinion piece in newspaper are more or less similar. Um, similar pattern in commentary you are going to comment about make interpret those findings so commentaries are easier on a new report or etc because the report is only reading you have to do but you can analyze that report if you know the background and context about that area what is already published in that area so uh, so analyzing and then third part is that if you you are you write commentary to give a direction, policy implication, suggestions. So uh, opinion piece in newspaper will be more written in layperson's language without references. But in commentary, uh, the first part, you summarize what are the key findings of that uh, particular topic or report if you are writing commentary on report. Second part, uh, you write that uh, how these findings of the new report fits into the broader context of the that setting or previous uh, findings. And then third part, you write that uh, what it means. So what the, the answer? So what should be done now? We know that these are the findings. So that's the approach we need to follow. And usually commentaries are fifteen hundred words and need to be provided references. Now key difference is that usually good journal say that use as many uh, as many uh, references as required. Commentaries can be written. Do for example, there is a lot of debate going people, whether children should be given or adults should be given vitamin D supplementation, zinc supplementation, etc. You can write commentary about those aspects that why zinc or vitamin D is required in the body. Why, what is the deficiency? What, how, why certain population get deficient and what should be done? What is the evidence on supplementation? Is, is it linked to the criteria? So you essentially, the people who write commentary need to have a wider understanding. You cannot like, uh, you need to know that topic for long and need to have an expert level understanding of that topic to critically analyze. So commentaries are, uh, uh, in my opinion, of course, original article have a different approach because they bring primary data, but commentaries are expert level understanding of that topic. And you need to read, like, I would say, remember this word, like uh, raw, read, analyze, write, and five, four, three. This is the proportion in which you have to like uh, spend time. And then if you do that approach, don't jump to the writing. If you do jump to the writing without reading and analyzing, I, I, it will not be published. Like I can be blunt in that. So if you want to hope for publication, read, analyze, and commentary if you only on those topics in which you know. Important point to hear, remember is that unfortunately, even a poor quality paper can be published somewhere in a predatory journal or a poor quality. But then when people who understand that topic will read and they will say that, okay, this person has published, but this person doesn't know what he has written. So publishing itself is not an achievement. Publishing which stands, the, stands out and which stands scrutiny of the peer is something achievement, which is something which is cited. So, and the, and this is my suggestion that uh, read, analyze, write. Commentaries, you can go only on the topic which you know fairly well. Yeah, we'll take the last question from Varsha because she was on the camera for the entire session. Rest all of you, please email your questions and there's a message for you in the chat box. Over to you, Varsha. We can't hear you. Maybe she can write in chat box. Yeah, we cannot hear you, Varsha. Yeah. Uh, please write your question in the chat box. And in the meanwhile, I think we can have question from Shalini. First of all, thanks, sir, for sharing the information. 
uh, sir, I just wish to know that in one of the courses attended by, uh, by ICMR and I, I came across that the voice to be used while writing the paper should be uh, active voice. Whereas usually just say, uh, we use passive voice. The study was conducted in RHTC like that. So that means active voice means that uh, we conducted the study at RHTC. Is it so? Okay, so I'm sorry, like I really do not uh, remember what is active voice, passive voice. But yeah, uh, what they are saying probably this, like I would never write article saying that I found or we yeah, found. Yeah. We should write the authors found. So it's a neutral. And I think that's a passive voice. So I, we or personalized nouns are not used. Mm -hmm. We always say the researchers found, the authors found. If we have we are writing that article and we are author. Mm -hmm. I always write the authors found. Okay. So authors found uh, becomes the active voice only, sir. Uh, yeah, the study, the uh, uh, it was found in the study. I, I think there is, it, it may be house in-house style of certain journals that they might want you to write in certain way. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I'm sharing is uh, also acceptable. And But uh, we do not use we, I or personalized noun. Other things can be written. But some general, certain general, like I don't recall about IJMR, but certain general have a certain house style. And that's why I'm saying that we should always go through the articles in that general, mm -hmm. that what style they follow, and we should adapt to that style. And advantage of such approach is that if we follow their style, mm -hmm. then one less round of revision, because once they can come back, oh, well, this kind of modification need to be done. And if you do already do and submit, then then it will save time. But I don't recall there is such thing like it has it was found during in the study. The authors found in the study both are acceptable in my opinion, and I've seen both approaches. Okay, one more small thing, sir. Uh, that uh, now the article uh, journals are categorized like uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 journals. Uh, what specifically are the criteria for categorization of the uh, of journals in these categories? Like, I really I mean, do not. I do not know what is Q1, Q2, K3. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks, sir. Okay, uh, so we got the question from Varsha. She wants to say, many a times when she writes the article, she reaches her own logic or rationale. So can she use them without references in the discussion? You have to build on that part. So uh, a certain, of course, analysis or discussion part is about your own interpretation and logic, but they should be founded in the in the work which has been done. And you have to substantiate your argument on, uh, on cert certain things. So it's not necessary that you uh, have to cite or give a reference, but you can say that this people, this person said, or previous study said this thing, other study said that, and but you, uh, but you have to give a rational logic why you think differently. Now, a single article cannot have many such uh, observation. You can, uh, you have a liberty to do one or two, but if you want to build, give a hypothesis, then you have to write a different kind of article. But original articles or research articles are always focused upon scientific evidence and some analysis of that. Analysis does not mean we can give hypothesis. Uh, for hypothesis, you have to follow a different approach. And usually hypotheses are also generated through different approach, though not cited. So no standard answer, but you can have some liberty of uh, uh, writing your own ideas and concept. But be very careful in doing so. If you do that very repeatedly, at certain point of time, if, though, if they are proven, then you will be the known expert. But if they are wrong or they are very flawed, then it is it will affect your reputation. This person write anything without any logic. So written word is uh, what is the word in English? Written word is like forever. So if you write something and publish something, it will come back to you many years later. And if you say something which is grossly wrong, then people will say that this person writes without researching and this thing. And as an academician expert, you want to avoid this thing. Whatever is written is, will last forever and you will be assessed. 
So be careful about this thing. If you do poor quality publication, people will say that this person's publications are poor quality. And I do not want to see anyone around us being tagged like that. Sure. So we are over with the questions. I'll give it over to Balaji, my colleague, for the vote of thanks. Over to you, Balaji. Yes, thank you, Anshika. And uh, we are closing this session and uh, it was a really um, informative session, sir. And uh, we would like to thank all our participants and our speaker, Dr. Chandrakant Laharia, for today's session. So your wonderful session has helped a deeper understanding of the nuances of writing a quality scientific paper. Uh, sessions like this will help in understanding the broader landscape of public health. We are writing for more papers, which can work as a groundwork for others. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we will update the further meetings and uh, expert talk series. And I would also especially thank the YouTube viewers. And uh, I hope the comments and queries was answered. If anything was left, we will definitely email you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Good night. Thank you, sir.